Hey everyone, Misco Electric here. Today is Sunday, June 9th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news. Our goal is to provide the most helpful 10 minutes of EV and electrification stories available anywhere. Now, one misconception most drivers have is that EVs cost more than gasoline vehicles. It used to be true, but times are changing. Several EVs with about 300 miles of range are now more affordable than their ICE competition. Tesla, Polestar, and Toyota are offering $299 per month leases with $3,000 down on the Model 3, Polestar 2, and BZ4X. Some Ford locations are offering the Mustang Mach-E for $299, but with double the down payment. Hyundai is one-upping everyone with a $189 per month lease on the Ionic 6, which offers the best range of the bunch at 360 miles, and the down payment is 30% lower at $1,999. For comparison, the Toyota Camry leases for $339 per month, with $3,299 down, and the BMW 3 Series starts at $589 a month, with $3,475 down. Other new deals that caught my eye this week include Porsche offering up to $4,500 off a purchase or lease for the Taycan to drivers of competing models. Nissan has introduced a new Leaf Conquest program that offers current Bolt EV or Bolt EUV owners and lessees $1,000 towards the purchase or lease of a Leaf until July 8th. And Volkswagen has cut lease pricing for its 2024 ID4, and they're also offering a $299 a month lease until July 1st. I'll include a link in the description below if you want to see more EV lease deals for this month. On April 6th, we reported on the Rivian R1 platform refresh coming soon, and now it's official. Soon, I expect Rivian will announce heat pump integration for improved cold weather efficiency, an improved infotainment system and camera system with the R2 steering wheel, and a host of other small improvements to the R1 lineup. Apart from the steering wheel, the rest of my speculation has landed. I live in Michigan and my Rivian R1T range is greatly reduced in the winter due to inefficient resistive heating. Rivian's new heat pump could greatly improve real world cold weather range. The body panels appear to be identical, but aesthetic changes include RGB lighting inside and in the front light bar, new paint options, and several new materials inside. There's a new electronically tinted glass roof similar to what Porsche's Taycan and BMW's iX have offered for years. The 2025 R1 vehicles feature more powerful infotainment system hardware. Their open-sourced Android automotive-based software now features 3D cell-shaded graphics powered by the Unreal Engine. The main screen will also support Google Cast, allowing over 3,000 apps to be displayed, including Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, and Disney+. Siri and Google Assistant are also supported by the new version. Those are some of the glitzy features which whip up demand and keep customers interested. From a business perspective, Rivian has been losing nearly $40,000 per vehicle sold, and the refresh is intended to improve vertical integration and simplify production, reducing costs and moving towards profitability. In February, Rivian CEO RJ Scaringe told CNBC's Phil LeBeau that they plan to reach positive gross margins by the end of 2024. The 2025 R1S and R1T transitioned from domain to zonal architecture, which reduced the electronic control unit count from 17 to 7. These ECUs help with vehicle controls and monitoring like airbags, braking, and even over-the-air software updates. The simplification greatly reduces material and labor costs. The new R1 platform will have three motor configurations, including a dual motor and performance dual motor, tri-motor, and quad-motor setup. All of these will be produced with Rivian's new motor technology they build in-house. The base dual motor with the standard 92.5 kWh LFP battery will start at $69,900 for the R1T and $75,900 for the R1S with an estimated range of 270 miles. The new tri-motor, which will only be available with a max pack battery, will have 850 horsepower and 1,103 pound-feet of torque with a 0 to 60 mile per hour time of 2.9 seconds. This will provide an estimated 380 miles of range with a price tag of $99,900 for the R1T and $105,900 for the R1S. 
I noticed they have a plaid carpet option for this one. The quad motor configuration will deliver 1,025 horsepower and 1,198 pound-feet of torque and will launch from 0 to 60 miles per hour in under 2.5 seconds and a quarter mile time of 10.5 seconds. We don't know what other brands will be selling in 2025, but these figures would make it quicker than any electric truck sold today. As far as the battery configurations go, they're similar with some redesign of the modules for battery servicing and a new die cast enclosure for manufacturing simplicity and more structural rigidity. The usable capacity for the standard pack will drop to 92.5 kilowatt hours from 106 kilowatt hours. The capacity of the large pack will drop to 109.4 kilowatt hours from 128.9 kilowatt hours and the max pack will bump up slightly to 141.5 kilowatt hours. Range has slightly improved for some variants with up to a maximum of 420 miles of range in the performance dual motor max pack option. My performance dual motor max pack R1T is rated at 410 miles of range which is the highest rating in the current lineup. They will also have new Pirelli tires that Rivian says will help improve range and a new 22 inch wheel with aero covers. It still has the CCS1 port for charging, but we understand that the port is modular. That means native NAC support could work its way into the lineup ahead. The 2025 R1 models feature improved driver assistant technology known as the Rivian Autonomy Platform. They will include their in-house 11 camera system that will work with five imaging radars and the new compute platform, which is supposed to be 10 times faster than the previous generation and includes NVIDIA AI processors. By the end of the year, Rivian hopes to offer a hands-free system. At launch, they will offer a premium version that ups the capability to include prompted lane changes. A few things I would still like to see in Rivian's plans for the R1 include bi-directional charging and features Rivian reps have been talking about since 2018, including the removable roof, a camp kitchen for the gear tunnel, and the Safari tour guide mode. The 2025 R1S dual motor is now on sale and the R1T version is to come soon. The tri-motor variants will be released this summer and the quad motors will be delivered before the end of the year. What are your thoughts on the changes for the R1 platform? What more would you like to see? Volvo's first all-electric EX90 SUV has rolled off the production lines in South Carolina. The vehicle, which was unveiled in 2022, is set to begin deliveries to U.S. customers in the second half of 2024. The EX90 is built at Volvo's Ridgeville plant near Charleston, which also produces the S60 sedan and will soon produce the Polestar 3. The plant has an annual production capacity of 150,000 vehicles. The U.S. version of the EX90 launches with a twin motor and twin motor performance trim with either a six or seven passenger configuration. It will have up to 300 miles of range and notable features such as a digital key, head-up display, heat pump, 250 kilowatt charging speeds with bi-directional charging capability, Google built-in infotainment system with 5G, available air suspension, LiDAR equipped advanced driver assistance technology, and a 4,850 pound towing capacity. Pricing for the twin motor starts at $76,695, which enables it to qualify for the federal tax credit since it's under the $80,000 starting price. What do you think of the Volvo EX90? Would you choose it over the Polestar 3? Finland-based EV charging infrastructure manufacturer ChemPower has cut the ribbon at their new manufacturing facility in North Carolina. The facility will produce ChemPower's satellite NEVI-compliant fast chargers that can be equipped with CCS1, Chatamo, or NAX connectors. The 154,000 square foot facility in Durham is the company's fourth factory globally, with the other three located in Finland. The plant is set to create around 300 new jobs in the area. ChemPower says their equipment's delivery reliability is over 90% and charger uptime over 99%. The company aims to produce 100,000 charging stations globally by 2027. In battery news, Mercedes-Benz has received the first B-sample solid-state battery cell from American battery technology developer Factorial Energy. Factorial says this marks the world's first announced B-sample delivery of solid-state battery cells to a global automaker.
Factorial's B sample cells with a capacity of over 106 amp hours are designed to offer high energy density, fast charging capabilities, and improved safety compared to traditional lithium ion batteries. Mercedes Benz will now integrate the B sample cells into EV modules and battery packs for extensive testing and optimization. The company's Factorial Electrolyte System Technology, or FEST platform, incorporates a lithium metal anode, enabling high energy density of 391 watt hours per kilogram. Factorial says these batteries offer up to 50% greater driving range compared to traditional lithium ion batteries and are designed to be compatible with existing lithium ion battery manufacturing equipment. In 2023, Factorial announced the opening of the largest solid state battery factory in Massachusetts with an annual capacity of up to 200 megawatt hours. In April, the company announced a partnership with LG Chem to develop new battery materials and potential licensing for solid state battery technology. Factorial is backed by Mercedes, Stellantis, Hyundai, and Kia. Do you think this is a promising production advancement for solid state batteries? The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, also known as NHTSA, has revealed its final rule on fuel economy standards for the 2027 to 2031 model years, just one month after the EPA released their standards. For some background information on these corporate average fuel economy, also known as CAFE standards, automakers are required to have their entire fleet mix meet a mile per gallon standard. They can achieve the standard by producing more fuel-efficient vehicles or selling fewer of the inefficient options like trucks and SUVs. Automakers can compensate for a shortfall by purchasing credits from their competitors which outperform the metric. The civil fee is about $140 for every one mile per gallon under the standard multiplied by the manufacturer's total production for the U.S. domestic market. As an example, General Motors sold 2.6 million vehicles in the USA last year and paid hundreds of millions of dollars for credits. Under the new rules, NHTSA aimed to nearly match the EPA rules, with passenger car fuel economy increasing 2% per year for the 2027 to 2031 model years and light trucks starting in 2029 to 2031 model years, with no improvement for the 2027 and 2028 calendar year. Ultimately, this means all light duty vehicles must meet an average of 50.4 miles per gallon in 2031, which is down from last year's drafted proposal of 55.7 miles per gallon. Currently, the national average is 39.1 miles per gallon. The requirement for SUVs and pickups will be 45 miles per gallon in 2031, which is also down from last year's draft proposal of 52.2 miles per gallon. Currently, the average is 35.2 miles per gallon. Relaxed CAFE standards will result in less incentive to create new fuel efficiency technology and reduced demand for surplus credits often sold by EV manufacturers. How do you think this will affect EV adoption? Well, that's all for this week's edition of The Current. We greatly appreciate you watching this latest episode and we hope to continue to make these videos as we see growing viewership. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing and sharing this video if you found some value in this coverage. Until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.